Hello Pioneers. Here is the next installment of Weekend History Trips. It's been a while since my last YouTube video and a lot of you guys have been asking when the next one's gonna be. So I am here in West Havistro, New York at the end of January in the like coldest day of the year. It's like 16 degrees. We're supposed to have a snowstorm coming soon. But I wanted to uh, talk about some local history uh, and how some of our uh, local spots tie directly into the American Revolution and, and more specifically, uh, Benedict Arnold, who we mentioned a little bit in class. Um, so three main spots for the video. Um, this trail here that's in the woods here in West Havistraw. Uh, second spot is Helen Hayes Hospital by Hoyer's Ice Cream Shop. And then the third spot, if I have enough sunlight and it doesn't start snowing a ton in Japan, which is at the very southernmost part of Rockland County. Uh, so I'm going to try to uh, splice together multiple video clips, which is something I haven't done yet, and even uh, put in images into the video. So when I point here, an image pops up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Hopefully, if not, then I just pointed at a tree. But I'll give it a shot. All right. Hope you guys like the video, and man, it is cold out here. Whew. Hello, pioneers. Um, I have my next long-awaited video, a weekend history trip, and I'm in West Havistraw. And to give you guys an idea of, of where, uh, behind me is Riverside Avenue. Um, Hudson River is over here. Up that hill is 9W, so 9W, you've got High Tor Mountain in the background. And then that way would bring you towards Havistra and up north towards Stony Point. And then down, this way down the river would take you down towards um, Nyack. So there's a trail here and it's at the very end of uh, Riverside Drive. And in these woods here, uh, during the American Revolution, uh, there was a some, some significant uh, series of events uh, dealing with Benedict Arnold. And I know we talked about Benedict Arnold uh, a little bit in class, uh, but we're going to talk more about him this upcoming week and his role uh, in the American Revolution. So a little bit of background. Uh, Benedict Arnold was not always a bad guy. In fact, uh, for quite a few years, he was a real American hero. He was born in Connecticut, and he ends up uh, rising through the ranks of the Continental Army. He starts off... Um, getting involved in little battles. Uh, he was involved in uh, the initial battles in Canada um, before the American Revolution even officially started. He helped uh, Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys uh, attack Fort Ticonderoga. Um, so he was a, he was a pretty accomplished uh, soldier, pretty accomplished fighter, even before the American Revolution officially begins. And as he continues to rise up, um, he's going to find... Um, other people are are surpassing him in rank, and he's going to feel um, a little annoyed that certain people are, are rising up above him, um, getting higher ranks than he is, and uh, he's going to fight uh, in a number of key battles. He's also going to take part in the Battle of Saratoga, which we'll talk about this upcoming week, and the Battle of Saratoga is a hugely impactful um, battle because it's a, a battle that the Americans win. And the battle is going to really kind of show the French who have been helping the Americans. If you remember, the French have been providing um, weapons, money, um, about 85 to 90 percent of the Americans' gunpowder in the first two years is coming from France. And, of course, Spain is also helping um, give materials to the British, uh, to the Americans. And this Battle of Saratoga is going to show the French that the Americans actually have a chance at really winning this. And it's going to encourage the French to officially jump into the war. As opposed to just kind of helping the Americans out, like, on the side, they're actually going to get involved in the fighting. So in this Battle of Saratoga, uh, Benedict Arnold is going to fight um, exceptionally bravely. And he's also going to uh, be shot in the leg. And it's going to shatter his leg. And uh, it's going to leave him unable to ride a horse, unable to really physically fight. And from that point forward, um, he's going to be given a, a command of uh, the city of Philadelphia. So Washington's going to give him that um, that command kind of as a favor, but he's going to view it really as, um, as a step down. And 
between that and also being passed up numerous times for promotions, he's, uh, he's really going to become um, upset with the Americans, upset with Washington. And he's going to also, while he's in Philadelphia, meet a uh, woman, a young woman, Peggy Shippen, who's uh, 18 years old at the time that he, he meets her. And this, uh, this woman is a loyalist and so is her father and if you remember from class loyalists were people who were loyal to the britain loyal to britain loyal to king george the third and the combination of him meeting her and the way that he's felt um ignored and uh passed up for promotions it's gonna uh cause him to have a change of heart and he is going to uh decide to betray the americans uh, in exchange for money from the British and a high promotion, uh, a rank that he really wanted from the Americans. And that's what brings us into this, into the woods here. And if you do take this trail here, uh, there's a sign about, about 200 yards from uh, the end of Riverside uh, Drive. And it says trees in sight. And the sign says, within these woods in the early morning hours of September 22nd, 1780, American General Benedict Arnold and British Major John Andre plotted the surrender of the American fortress at West Point. Benedict Arnold's going to uh, join up with um, a British officer. He's going to meet this British officer, Major John Andre. And what uh, Benedict Arnold's going to say to to John Andre is, listen, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you um, West Point and I'm sure some of you guys have been to West Point or driven past West Point. Uh, West Point is up by Bear Mountain. And before West Point was, right now it's a, it's a military school. Before that, it was just an actual fortress. Um, and what Benedict Arnold says, I'll, I'll give you that fortress. I'll give it up uh, because he was in control of that fort. And he says, listen, I'll give it up. I'll, uh, I'll surrender without a fight. You'll have control of that. And that was really strategically important because again if you've ever been to West Point it's right there on the Hudson River so it was impossible for ships to go up and down the Hudson River from New York City which is south all the way up north to West Point it would be impossible to go up the river without passing by West Point and West Point was armed with cannons and uh, it would make it very difficult for enemy ships to make it up uh, even further north up towards Albany uh, in these woods though uh, after they meet uh, John Andre is going to be heading back uh, south and he's going to be caught in Tarrytown. And if you've ever crossed the Tappan Zee Bridge, um, the first town that you end up in after you cross the bridge in Westchester is Tarrytown. And John Andre is going to be caught there and these uh, Continental soldiers are going to search him. And inside his shoe, he's going to find they're going to find um, these letters from Benedict Arnold stating this whole plot to give up West Point. This information makes it back to Washington. And when Benedict Arnold finds out that uh, John Andre has been captured and his plot has been found out, uh, Benedict Arnold's going to flee. He's going to flee south down the Hudson River uh, all the way to New York City. If you remember uh, from class, we talked about how New York City was taken over by the British almost immediately and was a uh, British stronghold for the entirety of the war. So... Benedict Arnold is going to uh, get away. He's going to escape to the British uh, behind British lines, and Major John Andre is going to be caught in Tarrytown. And if you're ever in Tarrytown, there's a restaurant called the Old Seventy Six House, and that Old Seventy Six House is where uh, John Andre was held. He was held there for a couple of weeks. Uh, Washington tried to get uh, the British to exchange Arnold for Andre because really the Americans didn't feel like. Uh, Andre did much of anything wrong. Really, it was Arnold that did the, the betraying. Uh, Washington's not going to hear anything. So he is going to have uh, John Andre hanged. Because uh, they're going to basically treat him like they would treat Arnold. And in Tapan, so up and here comes the train. Excellent timing. So hopefully you can still hear. Uh, Benedict Arnold's going to escape. He's going to fight for the British in the, the last few years of the American Revolution. Uh, after the British lose, he's going to go back to Britain because America would not be a place for him to stay. And he's going to spend the rest of his years uh, in Canada and in Britain. And he's going to basically die with, with very little money. Um, people in Britain didn't necessarily um, love him or adore him because not only did he betray America, he was just viewed as someone who wasn't a man of honor uh, or integrity. 
and he's, he's really going to spend the rest of his life um, obscure. And um, if you even go up to Saratoga now, there's a, a monument uh, just to just to his his leg um, to kind of commemorate how how brave he was when he did fight on the American side. All right, we take it onto the road now. Uh, we're passing by Hoyer's Ice Cream, so we're on 9W. Stony uh, Habistraw is behind us, approaching Stony Point. And up ahead in uh, Helen Hayes, I'm sure you guys have all driven down this road. Um, basically right here where this open field is, there used to be a house. And this house belonged to a colonist who was a spy, uh, spied for both sides during the war. And Benedict Arnold was in this house. All right, Pioneer, so I'm here in uh, Tapan now. I've, I've thought out a little bit. Um, and if you go up this um, street called Andre Hill Road in Tapan, which is named after Major John Andre, um, there's a road. And then at the end of the road, it, actually in the middle of the road, there's this uh, monument here. And this monument here commemorates, um, right here is where uh, John Andre was, was hanged. Washington couldn't exchange him for uh, who they really wanted, Benedict Arnold. All right, so I'm finally inside, and so is Luna, and uh, warming up next to a, uh, a fake fire. And I think the best way to uh, sum up this complicated story of Benedict Arnold is uh, with a story that came out of the war. After Arnold uh, joined the British side, he was speaking to an American officer who was a prisoner of the British, and Arnold, always concerned about his reputation and, and how he was viewed and being loved and this and that, um, he asked, what will the Americans do with me if they catch me? And the officer uh, thought for a moment and uh, said, they will cut off the leg which was wounded when you were fighting so gloriously for the cause of liberty and bury it with the honors of war and hang the rest of your body on a gallow, uh, which I think just about sums it up. Um, he did so many great things that, that are commemorated, but at the end of the day, the person uh, himself is a traitor. Right, Luna? All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Here's some bloopers. We're walking very fast right now. I'm trying to walk and talk and think all at the same time. Failed business ventures, and for the most part, his last few years. Really... It's like a start to a horror movie. All right, Luna, you go first, make sure it's safe. Why are we running now? It's too snowy. How about we walk? And in Britain. But you really didn't experience much success. Oh my god, it's so icy. Yeah. Ow! Hey dad, this thing really rocks. <laughs> rocks. Gotta take a seat. It's too cold to talk and walk. Wow, that bench is really cold. Okay. Never mind, keep in walking. Fact, for quite some time, he actually... He actually thought, uh, I lost my train of thought. Who put that rock there? Um, initial relief, oh, and the camera is not even on my face. Uh, and then maybe the Americans just don't appreciate him enough. And speaking of appreciate, I want to make sure that you guys appreciate how dangerous this video is right now. I'm on the side of a cliff. It's snowy, it's icy. It's supposed to snow, we're supposed to get a storm coming. And I need to keep the story straight in my head as my face gets redder and redder. Luna, are you seriously pooping right now? It's supposed to be a kid's video.